guys welcome back to my channel so today is another anti MLM video so today we're gonna to be tackling unique which is predominantly a makeup company um, and they also are an MLM of course and for those that don't know MLM stands for multi-level marketing so whenever you hear the term MLM you'll a lot of the time hear it also in tandem with or followed by that's a pyramid scheme because a lot of people find them to be very closely related and similar and I'm one of those people of course but for just for the purposes of you know trying to educate people and, and not trying to isolate people or become polarizing I don't want to use the term pyramid scheme anymore because that just kind of close some people just like shut off after that right so they are however a direct selling company so they are like independent contractors they go out and they sell under the unique brand and they say that they have their own business and you know they work for themselves yada 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 a lot of the time though with MLMs they get a bad rap because if you are in the business opportunity in an MLM you are more likely to be a customer rather than an actual seller they make their money off of their own employees buying inventory and like basically failing the business opportunity. Presenters not understanding supply and demand and then they buy loads and loads of inventory that they can never sell. So one thing that Unique does pride themselves on is you don't need to technically carry any inventory, but the reality of that is that you do need to carry inventory because you need to have a kit if you're doing makeovers. Um, if you want to recommend shades to people, they need to know what shade they are. They can't just go off of like the internet and not really understand what's going on or why they should buy something you basically have to know what you're talking about as well so it's $99 to become a distributor and you earn like 20 to 30 percent commission of course the 30 percent commission comes later once you've moved up the ranks and you do that through set personal selling and then also through recruiting people to the business opportunity right recruiting again is at the center of the company and as all of these MLMs it's basically necessity um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some numbers here of, that proves why it is at the center of um, just this this structure and like to succeed in this company you do need to recruit I'm truly actually surprised of course I always talk about the legality of and like we talk about different lawsuits that they're in and I'll go over that in a little bit but I'm actually surprised that unique hasn't been sued yet for being a pyramid scheme because they again recruiting is virtually necessity to succeed in this company okay of course I'm gonna link down below any of the sources that I use as always but let me just read this to you this is something that I found to be very interesting so basically if you sold ten thousand dollars worth of unique products a month you would only be making two thousand four hundred and one dollars after the cost of the starter kit so you would have made twenty four hundred dollars that month and that's after selling ten thousand dollars worth of stuff right so it's really really hard to do something like that it would be very hard to sell ten thousand dollars of product a month you would really have to have a big customer base as well and you would have to be really good at selling and I don't know how you would do that to be honest with you a lot of people know this about me but if you don't know this about me my background is actually in makeup I worked at Sephora several years ago and I was actually I went through the process of being Sephora like makeup artist certified which is means that you are able to actually put makeup on people at the store it's a it's a process for sure like you have to go through testing and evaluations and stuff like that and we'll talk about that later but yeah so I definitely do know what I'm talking about I've been involved with makeup several years this channel started as a makeup channel I don't do that stuff as much anymore but I definitely say it's one of my areas of expertise and like if I ha were to have any that would probably be me actually be my number one area of expertise is makeup so yeah I definitely know what I'm talking about with this one more so than even any of the other ones I've talked about so far so like even Beachbody like I you know this one is one where I really am like okay I know if this is bad or not so anyway let's get back to so again if you sold ten thousand dollars worth of stuff let's say you were doing that consistently every single month which would be again very difficult right you would be bringing in a salary of only thirty thousand dollars a year before taxes thirty thousand dollars is decent it's decent for sure um, again granted that you actually are making those consistent sales which is probably not likely it's decent but it's not enough to live off of especially if you're single if you want to live alone and be truly independent it's not something that you could live off of especially because unique doesn't have like those benefits that a traditional company would have so you'd be paying you know health insurance if you are over 26 years old you know not really enough to live off of for sure so you would definitely have to be recruiting somewhere in there to get over that hump right of becoming more independent 
In addition to that, it's interesting that it says before taxes because I did find out that unique distributors do have to file a 1099, of course, if they made over $600 in a calendar year. We'll talk about that later as well. Most of them do not make over $600. They don't even make really over $300 a year, but we're, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, basically, they file taxes at the end of the year if you file a 1099, which is what I also fill out. So um, for people that don't understand what a 1099 is, it's a lot of entrepreneurs use it. Um, people that don't have like somebody to report to necessarily, and they don't get taxes taken out during the year. So at the end of the year or in April, you have to pay a huge amount of money, depending on how much you made, of course, but you have to pay a huge amount of money uh, to the IRS. So kind of sucks. But anyway, um, so hopefully you have money saved up. <laughs> to, I also want to say too, just to go back to my Sephora thing for a second here. I remember one day in particular where we had a Tarte event at Sephora. And of course, there's constantly a stream of people. It was like a Saturday. It was a Tarte event. People got like a free gift with purchase and stuff. And I was leading the event. And I remember I was on my game that day. I was like on it. We had everything in stock. I knew Tarte products like the back of my hand at that point. And I ended up selling at the end of the day $1,000 worth of stuff. And like that was unheard of at the time that somebody could sell a thousand dollars worth of Tarte products. So imagine I was on the, it was the best day of my life selling. Okay. I could sell a poopy flavored lollipop to just about anybody that day. <laughs> like you would have to do that every other day, pretty much of the month, every three days of the month to basically make that $30,000 a year. So you'd have to work your butt off. Um, it's de it wouldn't be like a side hustle if you were doing that. You know what I'm saying? So well, let's talk about the lawsuits really quick because you know, I love to talk about that stuff, but you know what I mean? So they did have a class action lawsuit in 2017 and it was actually over greenwashing, which is a new term to me. And one of my subscribers asked me to look into it. She asked me to look into it. There's boo. Um, <laughs> she asked me to look into it after my Arbonne video because Arbonne was also accused of something very similar where they were claiming that their products were natural and organic and green and stuff like that. And a lot of them were not so like the ingredients were not completely natural and Greenwashing is basically when companies say or claim that they're all natural, all green, all organic, when they're really, in fact, not. So, again, the lawsuit was in 2017. They Unique presented their Moodstruck 3D Fiber Lashes, which is like, you know, their mascaras are like their, uh, their holy grail. Like, that's basically their claim to fame is their mascaras. So, they presented their Moodstruck 3D Fiber Lashes as being natural and containing 100% natural green tea fibers. When, in fact, it was unnatural with unnatural ingredients and contained no tea, green tea leaves whatsoever. So, um, they were sued over that. Rightfully so and again, they were greenwashing and to me it's interesting greenwashing is an interesting concept Which I need to look into more of course But it's a very like sanctimonious in my opinion thing to do because it's like oh We're so green and we're this that you know getting people to buy their products because they're claiming to be something that they're actually not You know, they're not actually upholding this standard that other companies can't some companies can't afford to do natural products some companies don't know how or they're that's not available so like they were kind of differentiating themselves in that way but in fact they were lying about it so yikes nice really really good really good guys thanks a lot that's really cool of you so let's talk about this now so the slogan for unique is called uplift empower validate it's very ironic i wanted to point that out because if you go to the better business bureau or if you go to like let's say um just type in like unique reviews unique job experience whatever there are so, it is littered, absolutely littered with reviews of ex presenters who said, this is like the cattiest company ever. I, you know, I was bullied by my upline. I couldn't afford X, Y, and Z. My upline told me it was my fault. I suck, this, that, and the other. I also think it's very ironic because as I talked about in my last video, you should never really purchase from an MLM company just because I find them to be, again, they're very unethical in the way they treat their employees. Again, 99% of people are really losing money in these kinds of things. And they're predominantly women. So it's just like, I mean, it's not funny, but it's very ironic that it's, it's disempowering women and then they're the whole business structure and it's made, it's set up to make people fail. And then here's their slogan, uplift, empower, validate, you know? Okay. It's a play at sanctimony in my opinion. So here we go. So I also wanted to point out too, that the one thing I've noticed is the most fervent and just passionate 
anti-MLMers, like people like me who really just, I can't stand MLMs, I want them to be like gone, you know, goodbye. The most passionate people are actually most of the time ex-unique presenters. Um, they, went, they went through the company and they felt just so wronged by them that they've now turned around and dedicated their life to educating people and trying to prevent people from like making the same mistake that they did, which was join the company Unique. It's just crazy. So um, Unique also has been, I don't know if you've heard, they've been affectionately dubbed Poonik. <laughs> so well, more, more on that later because you'll pretty much find out why. I And I want to say too, in researching this company, it's just been, been very disappointing and it's probably the first time where I've truly, I'm like, man, I've almost lost faith in humanity after seeing some of this stuff. So it's very important that I make this video and I make it now. So let's circle back really quick to uh, some of the finances of what people typically make in this kind of company. Unique presenters are making an average of less than $4 a week and on average less than $200 a year. Those are statistics taken from their SEC report which the, a Unique has not released their income disclosure statements, which is extremely, not only shameful, but also very shady and not really a great look, just because a lot of these com MLM companies do release their, you know, income disclosure statements and they're really horrific. Like they show obviously that 99.7% of people don't make money in their company um, and they still release them. So I can only imagine what Uniques are. I can only imagine what Uniques are, especially because Makeup is something where you can truly get addicted to buying it. Believe me, I know. Um, so it's just crazy. And then I saw another statistic. It was like they make $14 a year on average. Some, somebody else did a statistic. I'm going to link everything down below, of course, so you can see that. But basically, they all revolve around a very small number of money. And most people are most likely losing money. Okay? So, um, again, if before you get into this opportunity or if you're thinking about it, it's very difficult to succeed and I don't want to say that you're, you know, you couldn't do it. I'm saying it would be very, very difficult, almost impossible, virtually impossible, right? To become a unique distributor, the requirements to do this, again, it's a makeup company. Um, you must be of the age of the majority in your state or country, so that's probably age 18. Uh, you must reside in unique territory. You must have a valid tax ID and you just have to purchase, purchase a starter kit, which is $99. So basically, yeah, you just need to purchase the starter kit. You don't have to have a background in makeup. You can just kind of be, you know, you can like makeup a little bit. You can like, like makeup not at all, <laughs> you, but you can still become a presenter. So, um, and, and in that as well, there's, there's kind of like, I'm trying to figure out more about it, but there is like some kind of weird, like unique makeup artist type of thing where it's just kind of, like, kind of like shits all over real makeup artists, especially people who did go to like a cosmetology school or did again go through like some kind of makeup certification course or something like that or has spent so many years in it. I kind of go back and forth with that one too because it's like, you know, do you really need to go to college or like a school to become a makeup artist? Not really, um, but you do need to learn proper techniques for sanitation and, um, you know, just general things like that. So. Um, I feel like a lot of them, the unique presenters probably don't look into that kind of thing um, and they probably definitely would benefit from that and just proper practice of stuff like that. So, um, but again, you know, you can go on YouTube and stuff and look up makeup tutorials. So I'm not going to say that that's the worst thing ever to not be makeup certified or, you know, have a cosmetology license, but it does kind of hurt other makeup artists in that way because here, here comes this unique girl who knows absolutely nothing and she's peddling all this makeup, calling herself a makeup artist, you know, certified, right? And then people kind of associate the two when they're not at all the same, right? So anyway, um, that's just how you can become a unique presenter. Again, it's just something like anybody can join pretty much as long as you purchase. So but let's talk about some of the ranks. So basically, again, you move up ranks by recruiting people. Essentially, you can move up, I guess, technically by selling products, but you really move up quicker and more efficiently by recruiting people into the business opportunity and then you make money based on whatever those people sell like you'll get a commission and that gets like gets you paid right you get paid three hours after after your sale and that money is placed into your account that's something that they like to harp on is like you're gonna get paid right away get paid right away in my opinion I feel like that could easily turn around into really really pushy sales people who 
really want you to get buy something because they really need the money right now so they're like can you please just purchase this so i can get my money three hours later i just feel like that could be a real disaster and i'm sure it likely is and another thing that they like to say too that they like to harp on is that you were online so like you don't have to have the home parties anymore like the avon or the makeup mary Kay or anything like that like those traditional kind of mlm type things um, so they say, hey, you can you can have these online parties. We're online. We're in the digital world. This is so great. You know, the world is your oyster. However, the problem with that is that the world is an oyster for every unique presenter. So basically, anybody can buy from a certain unique presenter. So if there's one unique presenter who is just knocking out of the park, she's the best salesperson in the whole world, you're up against that girl, right? And especially, it's especially bad if you recruit within your own social network because it dilutes your own profits, right? So if you're recruiting your best friend, which they always tell you to like recruit your friends, recruit your family, and those people have the same friends that you do or the same family members that you do, uh-oh, you just diluted your profits because now those people are going to buy from your best friend or your mom or your sister. And uh, yeah, it's like you have to go find a whole new group of people who you don't really know. So that's something that you need to be careful of and like, you know, okay, of course you're up against everybody else and as unique as most MLMs, it's totally oversaturated and you're recruiting your own competition into this thing and it's just really not a good look, you know? The highest status is called black status and those presenters can earn up to 48% commission on a product, which is interesting. It might seem great and you're like, wow, I'm almost making 50% commission on these products. Like, that's great. And plus you're making money from your downline, their downline, and their downline, right? Three generations of downlines. However, because there are people in the company making that much commission off of the products, that price is now built into the price of unique products. So this complicated business plan, which does not exist for most makeup companies like Urban Decay, doesn't have that <laughs> like it's just basically the raw materials they mark it up a little bit to make you know a certain amount of money and then they sell it right this one however is raw materials they mark it up to make a profit and then they mark it up even more because there's people who are making so much money off of these products when other people are purchasing them like these black status presenters um, so they do need to make a profit off of that the company does so that you're gonna see that price reflected in um, the products. So let's go through some of the, the prices of the products, shall we? So their Moodstruck, you can look at this right now, it's on their website. Their Moodstruck Beloved Press Shadow Palette. It is a four pan eyeshadow palette. It is $52. It retails for $52. So $13 a shadow. <laughs> $13 a shadow. And for comparison, the Charlotte Tilbury, uh, Charlotte Tilbury, the makeup brand, which is a hugely established brand it's used at all the grammys all the red carpets met gala etc they literally have i think they have 20 percent stake in a mall Clooney. <laughs> like seriously um they're a hugely established brand luxury brand of of the, it's like what the stars wear hello their eyeshadow palette is 53 dollars their four pan eyeshadow palette so most people don't even know what unique is they're selling their products for that that much money right so it's kind of like oh Okay, their concealer is $29, so again, extremely steep. Their liquid lipstick is $27, so for, again, for reference, it's more expensive than Marc Jacobs, Bobbi Brown, NARS, Lancome, and Natasha Denona. So I'll let that sink in for a little bit. Again, like I said, that price is going to be reflected in this crazy compensation plan that these people are getting, these commissions people are getting. Crazy, 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 crazy. Like I said before, MLM, the product doesn't really matter. A lot of the time it is, of course, a cover up for this recruiting model. Like they have to have products technically to be legal and to operate legally. However, of course, you know, there's gonna be different opinions on the product. I personally would never purchase a unique product. I've talked about this before. You know, I just wouldn't purchase from these because not only are you giving like a unique presenter a false sense of this is like a good business idea, you don't wanna give somebody that impression, obviously. You know, I, again, I find it to be unethical and I don't wanna buy from a brand, a company that's unethical and, treat, and treats their employees like that and, and causes them to lose money and be scammed and, you know, go through all this psychological trauma, honestly, truly. So, 
Anyway, so it's not so much about the products, but I will talk a little bit about the products, some of my findings. So let's chat a little bit about their shade range of their foundation. It's probably the worst shade range I've ever seen on a foundation line, to be completely honest with you. And as many people know, if you have a bad shade range in today's day and age, you're pretty much dubbed with a scarlet letter and everybody looks at you for the rest of time as the company that didn't cater to everyone they probably have two shades for people with darker complexion and that's about it in this case i hate to say it but it's probably a good thing if you have darker skin congratulations you dodged a bullet with this one <laughs> because they're straight up not making products for you and you know that's something where it just they're behind the times and it's like i'd love to see them try to explain that away but obviously they show that they don't really put that much research and development into these products because otherwise somebody would have told them hey get some more freaking shades you know what i'm saying so yikes um also last year february 1st unique stop production of their hydrating mask because a, the consultants that received it early reported burning redness and damaged skin so they had to completely stop production on a hydrating mask like what on earth so you know obviously not great not great um you hate to see that also uh, a lot of people have reported eye infections from their mascaras they have like these very strange fiber things that just basically look like spider legs in addition to them greenwashing and lying that their products were natural and had green tea leaves um they also were caught lying about being cruelty free so Congrats, like they also claimed that a bunch of their products were vegan and then they found that they weren't and they also had to come up with a statement which is currently out there. They were saying they were cruelty free although they weren't certified with PETA, Leaping Bunny, any of those organizations and they came out with a statement saying they haven't conducted in-depth cruelty free reviews of each ingredient. Basically their raw ingredients are probably a likely to be tested on animals, they don't know where the raw ingredients come from, and to be cruelty free and to say that you are, you must be able to confirm and without a, a shadow of a doubt that your raw ingredients are not being tested on animals and your raw materials. So that's one that really hits close to home, <laughs> of course. So let's get into the, the worst part of it all. So they have this charity for sexual abuse victims, and you might be thinking, wow, that's great, I love it. And I think we can all agree, we would, I, I would love to help sexual abuse victims, you know. Anybody wants to help them, we can all agree on that. It's a great thing to help them, right? However, <laughs> there are stipulations to this, of, as, you know, we can expect with this kind of company. So the stipulations are, allegedly, you must have been sexually abused in your childhood. So if you were sexually abused, like, yesterday, and you're, even if you're, like, if you're a unique consultant, you were sexually abused yesterday, and you're an adult, Sorry you don't qualify. <laughs> Gets a bad taste in my mouth when there's like all these barriers to it, you know? But there's another major barrier to entry, which is that the women must make their own travel arrangements and, tra and pay to travel there. So if you are a woman who was sexually abused in her childhood, you also have to have enough money to even get to this retreat. It's supposedly this thing where women go, they do yoga, they eat like fancy food, and you get unique makeovers, and you do meditation. To my knowledge, and again, I don't, I, this is not fact, I'm not saying this is going to be fact, and again, I'm saying that for legal reasons, but there's virtually no, like, psychological assistance, and, and, you know, I've been watching a lot of podcasts that involve doctors and trauma and, and, like, addiction, drug addictions and different things like that, and one thing that really stuck out to me, and I, I immediately connected the two, is that the doctor I was listening to was saying that, you have to address the trauma first with these types of things and especially a childhood trauma which is going to stay with that person for the rest of their life and it really can mess somebody up especially children who are so impressionable and those are their learning years and their growing years and so that type of thing like being sexually abused is going to stay with them and really cause a lot of problems um, in the, into their adulthood so it is so important with these types of retreats or these types of things when you're dealing with people that did go through sexual abuse, especially as a child, that you do address that initial, that trauma first, and then you can do makeovers, yoga, you know, you know, stuff like that. 
Like you need to help these people become more self-actualized and, and get their feet on the ground. I, I really find this stupid thing that they're doing makeovers and like all of this superficial shit. Like what the what is this stupid charity? What is this stupid charity? This is not helping anybody, okay? It's just taking away from time that they could have been using to get actual help somewhere else, right? Here's another thing too. So I'm gonna link this down below, but there is a, there's like an application process to be, be on this retreat. So allegedly again, it's around like 15 women in this home in Utah. And again, these people have to fly there, pay for their travel there. It's like a week long retreat. A lot of people have reported, and, and there's a really great interview, again, I'm gonna link it below. There's a really great interview of somebody who did apply to this. She went through like an interview process. You have to interview for this to get there. And basically what she concluded is that you need to be completely recovered, have no issues whatsoever, have never made a mistake in your past, such as trying to commit suicide, and you also can't wake up in the middle of the night from a nightmare crying. So basically you have to have like no psychological issues. Like you can't have any unresolved trauma. You can't have done anything extreme in your past. Like it needs to be this perfect unblemished history basically. And you basically need to be totally fine and able to even go on this. Again, allegedly it is just a, it's just a recruiting ground for being a unique distributor. So not only are these women, you know, victimized in the worst imaginable way you know as a child they were sexually abused only to go on and become a victim of this predatory MLM marketing mess it is so deplorable and it is so annoying too because this is these charities when you're you know this charity thing I, I, there's so many things I have to say about this and it's like I the one thing I hate in this world I hate people who are so self-righteous and like you know, so sanctimonious and they think that they're the best for doing this and like these distributors and these presenters, they say, hey, don't you want to make a difference? You can buy makeup you love and then also donate to and also help people who went through sexual abuse. Uh, again, it, it has been found that only a small amount even goes to this foundation that they have. It's called the Unique Foundation. Um, I did my own uh, math here based on the SEC revenue and then also from in 2016 and then the Unique Foundation revenue in 2016 and where they allocated their their money to and it was it came out to be only 2% of their revenue and their earnings went to this foundation and then also beyond that they they say ha over half the money from the Unique Foundation to help sexual abuse victims went to healing services. Again, they do not specify. I looked up and down for what these healing services are and pretty much the only thing I've come to is it's probably this yoga class or this like, you know, I don't even know what they're doing there because it doesn't seem like it's very productive and it's only a few women at a time and these people have to go through, jump through hoops to get there and they have to be certain kind of people. and. It's so annoying, just again, to go back to this charity thing, I hate when people talk about how much they donate, you know, they talk about, oh, I donated here, I'm doing such a good thing. They have to constantly boast about how philanthropic they are. If you're truly philanthropic, if you truly love to donate to charity, if you truly are doing something like that and you are just, you're altruistic, then you don't tell anybody about that. Like you don't need to boast it to the world. You don't need to talk about how much you donate. You don't need to talk about how much good you do in the world. You just do it. You just do it. You know, it's like, I'm sure there's a plenty of us who just, we donate every time we can. We give money to the poor. We help everybody, you know, anybody that asks. It's like, there's plenty of us who don't say anything because why would you? Like it's so annoying and it is again so sanctimonious and that is what, exactly what this is. It's like a guise. It's like this bullshit charity retreat that they have. And by the way, they are, their unique foundation, again, is, it's, it's classified as a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 organization, meaning they're exempt from taxes with the IRX. They don't have to pay um, income taxes, which is, again, like, okay. Okay, um, sure. Guess what other organization, I, this is just interesting to me, guess what other organization is a 501c3? Freaking Make-A-Wish. Like, a company that like all, they're dedicated to only doing good and then there's this same company who doesn't have to pay any freaking taxes and they're doing this bullshit charity for sexual abuse victims, but only certain ones, you know? So, it's so annoying. And then too, what I found when looking into this, because this is like the dumbest thing in the world, um, I found that, and it was confirmed that the 
one of the co-founders and presidents of Unique, it was the woman, she posted an advertisement. I don't know why you would do this and be so stupid, but it was confirmed that it was her, um, allegedly again. She posted like an advertisement for, they were casting for to a promotional video for this Haven retreat, which is their sexual abuse retreat in Utah. So they were casting for it and of course they needed like, they needed actors, right? So they needed people to be in the promotional video to promote this retreat. So I don't know why they need to promote it even more because all their distributors are doing that, acting like they're the best people in the world. But yeah, so basically in her post though, she said, I'm looking for women from this age range. I'm gonna post it, but um, looking for women in this age range, you need to be edgy and colored hair preferable, have tattoos. They wanted a, somebody who looked a certain way, like a stereotypical, I don't even know what, but they were basically saying, you need to look like troubled, like gritty and like hardened. Like, I don't know, it's like, why would that, why does that represent a community of people who are sexually abused? It is, it puts such a bad taste in my mouth that they're, vic they're stereotyping victims of sexual abuse. And they're looking for these people. I don't care that they're casting people for this promotional video. I understand it because you have to blur faces. You can't show actual sexual abuse victims, you know. But it's like they're casting people that look a certain way for a video who are, you know, sexually abused. This is so sick. So let's just recap really quick. So not only are they greenwashing, pretending like their stuff is natural, pretending like it's, you know, got green tea fibers, this, that, and the third. They're also pretending they're cruelty free, alleging that they're cruelty free, you know, but they're really not. They're testing their products likely on, you know, somewhere in China or something like that because they're really cheap to make, again. And then they have this, they're under this guise that they're helping sexual abuse victims when they're helping like 15 women who fit a very specific look and, and, and lifestyle and like, there's a huge barrier to entry to even become, be part of this. So this one is to me like, you know, I, I think I've seen enough. <laughs> I think I, I think we've seen enough. That's really just all I can say. I don't, you know, beyond the makeup, beyond the expertise of these women, you know, of course, with any makeup related thing, we're seeing it even now. This is so unique is not the only offender of this, but like when it comes to beauty, there's always going to be this level of materialism and cattiness because it's so image-based, right? So it seems like more so than anything that Unique is falls victim to like this cattiness, this sanctimonious like, I'm better than you, what nonsense. It is so deplorable. I'm so sick of this company. I've had enough. I don't know how you could support after all of this, you know, after seeing this or anything like that. It's just really, really unfortunate. Anyway, yeah, that's about all I have for this unique uh, nonsense. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you learned something. Leave a like if you like these kind of videos. It really helps out the channel. It helps it grow. Share with your friends if you want to. And um, thanks a lot. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I make more videos like this. Let me know which one you want me to do next down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!